All right, what's up, y'all? I'm going to be quick because I know y'all don't want to sit here and watch no 30, 15 minute long video. So I'm going to try and keep this around like eight minutes. I'm going to try. All right, so the name of today's message or the message that I'm going to bring today is how to truly worship God. So I'm going to start with a quick prayer and I'm going to just jump into it. Lord God, I ask that you just touch every single person that may watch this video, Lord God that they may learn something from this video, that I just allow you to take control, that you just touch them through this video, Lord God. Allow them to love you more, understand you more, understand your word more, and just be on fire for you and just have a lifestyle that's willing to live according to your word and to your commandments. Lord, I ask that you just touch them and that you just bless them. Give them your holy spiritual wisdom and knowledge and just strengthen them, Lord God, and build them up. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. So, the name of the message is how to truly worship God. So, in John chapter 4, verse 24, it says, God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in, in the spirit and in truth. This means you worship God wholeheartedly with your lifestyle, showing God that you are truly committed to him and nothing else. The scripture is telling us that because God sees us lifting our hands, singing worship songs, and doing different gestures and all those things, that, that isn't enough for him. We must live our lives abiding by his word. That's how you worship in spirit and in truth. I even think about people who may be new to this sometimes, like, new to this lifestyle of living for God and they step into the church for the first time and seeing people worship. It may seem different to them or they may think that they don't know how to worship, but I say to people who feel like that, that that is a lie from the enemy, you know, because God doesn't care about how loud you sing or how much you may cry or how much you shout in church. God cares more about what's happening internally inside of you than what's happening externally and what's happening during worship. See, when you live a life for Christ, that is what Jesus is more concerned about rather than putting on a worship show for him. Our lifestyle is our worship. Your thoughts and your commitment to Jesus is your worship to him. Just do everything in the name of Jesus and not for your own self-glorification. This is worshiping God. That's how you worship God, because God gets all the glory at the end of the day, whether you want to give it to God or not. He just wants to see if you will be humble enough to give it to him or not. Worshiping God is giving your heart to him and putting your pride aside, living your life according to his scriptures and his commandments, even though it may seem hard. So you may be asking, why even worship God in the first place? The Bible says in Matthew chapter 23, verse 12, it says, For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. See, when you humble yourself before the Lord, and you surrender to Him and live a lifestyle for Him and worshiping Him, there are great benefits. God is a just God, and He's not selfish. He loves and cares for you and everybody else. You have to open up to him and be willing to live according to God's word. And speaking about living for God's word, let's let's take a look in the book of Revelations when it states people who who will take the mark of the beast will worship the Antichrist spirit, image and likeness. In Revelation chapter 14, verse 9, it says, A third angel followed them and said in a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on their forehead or on their hand. And that's the end of the uh, verse. Um, so I wanted to use this scripture to make a great point. The point I wanted to make was, or I'm going to make, is the Bible is a very artistic book with a lot of similes, representations, and metaphors, parables, and stories, and etc. When this verse says forehead or the hand, it doesn't completely mean it would be a physical mark on the forehead or on the hand, not saying that it can't be a physical mark on the forehead or hand. It's referring to a spiritual mark, something not seen by the human eye. 
The forehead represents the mind and how you think, and the hands represents the actions that you do, saying the people who accept the mark of the beast will worship the beast and its image based on their actions and their thoughts. When they worship the beast's image and likeness, they are doing it with their lifestyle, living a sinful lifestyle and just indulging in a sinful nature that is not pleasing to the Lord. Their lifestyle shows their allegiance to the Antichrist's name, image, and likeness, which is what I truly believe is the mark. It's a spiritual mark. It's a mark based on your lifestyle and your allegiance. Your lifestyle and allegiance to someone or to something is considered worship. Now, it should be the exact same way for God. When you worship God, you should worship God with your lifestyle. Every person is an image barrier made in the image of God. As it is said in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, it reads, So God created man in his own image, and the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. We all was made in the image of God. So we are all image barriers. So since we are all image barriers, uh, spiritually made in the image of God, you can treat, you should treat, you're supposed to treat others with love, kindness, and respect. For example, you can curse someone out at the dollar store right before you come to church and throw your hands up uh, singing and worshiping to the top of your lungs. That's not real worship based on your previous actions at the dollar store. You live a lifestyle according to God's commandments. That's how you truly worship God. Let's also refer to this. God also uh, has a spiritual mark too. And we could go back to the book of Revelations in chapter 9 verse 4. It says, They were told not to harm the grass uh, of the earth, any green plants or any trees, but only those people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. Also in Revelations chapter 7 verse 3, it says, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the servants of our gods on their forehead. Talking about people in the end times uh, who has the mind and who is dependent on God who has the mind of God and who is dependent on God. They are sold out to God, 100% committed to Him. They have a lifestyle that follows and is pleasing to God. They will be protected and not harmed in the end times, which is a time God will be, He will begin judging the world because God see His true worshipers based on their lifestyle. And He protects them because God is our protector. So, these are three examples I want to leave with you will leave with you on how to truly worship God and worshiping God can be diverse and be done in different type of ways and fashions and different styles as long as it's according to God's word. So one is you cannot worship God who you do, who you don't even know. It's like how can you worship God who you have who like who you do not have a relationship with? So in Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Our acknowledgement of our Creator informs and motivates our worship. And without true knowledge of God, our worship cannot please Him. Uh, two, uh, the second um, example is different types of worship. So I'm going to use David as an example. David when when you read about David, you should go read about David. In the Bible, David danced, he shouted, sang, he meditated on God. He did all kind of things when he worshiped God. And um, some people seen David as a fool sometimes uh, when he worshiped God based on how he worshiped. He didn't do it for looks or to seem cool. That's probably why he seemed foolish. It came from his heart. He didn't care about how anyone viewed him. David had a great relationship with God and didn't care how people viewed him, which is what was most important about his worship and his praise to God. Your praise must be from your heart and centered around God. No matter what you do, you must glorify God always. And the third and last uh, point and example I want to leave with you guys is worship is worshiping is not a performance talent show or contest or anything it's more about an internal inside internal spiritual experience rather than an external 
physical experience, like, you know, a rock show or a concert. Remember, we battle against our flesh. And Hosea chapter 6, verse 6, it says, For I desire mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offering. It is saying we should focus more on God's everlasting word and his commandments, quote unquote, our Christian lifestyle, rather than the world temporary offerings and entertainments when worshiping God. So when we worshiping God, we must focus more on our lifestyle rather than the music and all the shouting and the things that you could kind of categorize as entertainment. Um, so this was a quick message I wanted to leave with you guys. I hope you guys got something from it and that it sticks with you. I hope y'all stay blessed and peace.